here in question number 16 two drops of same radius are falling through air with steady velocity v if the two drops coalesces what would be the terminal velocity let the radius of one drop is a small r then i would say 4 by 3 pi r cube rho into g this is the weight of the body must be balanced by the viscous force that being how much 6 pi n r v this is the value of the viscous force and it is actually weight of this much of the part i can write it down as mg itself fine now two different drops they are collapsing that means now the radius will be different and i would say it is 4 by 3 pi r cube this is the volume of one part into 2 must be equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube this is the final radius so effectively capital r would be small r into 2 to the power 1 by 3 fine so now let's say the terminal velocity is v dash this time so definitely at that instant the total viscous force will be counterbalancing the weight of the total body and i would say this time the total weight of the body would be 2 mg this was written as mg and it would be 6 pi n capital r into v dash fine how much was this value it was mg was 6 pi n rv so this portion would be written down as 2 into 6 pi n rv this portion so r into v dash would be 2 small r into v we found the value of capital r here so v dash will be 2 rv and this is r 2 to the power 1 by 3 so the terminal velocity that we are getting from here it is v into 4 to the power 1 by 3 fine so answer here would be option 2 that's the correct answer so now let's proceed to question number 17 in question number 17 when a ball is released from rest in a very long column of viscous liquid its downward acceleration is a just after release find its acceleration when it has acquired two-third of its terminal velocity so initially when ball was just released i would say if the mass of the ball is m naught then its weight will be acting in downward direction and the buoyancy force that will be acting in upward direction so if effective force f is coming out to be in downward direction so acceleration would have been said as f divide by m naught is equal to how much it is the acceleration a initially we have not considered the viscous force here now by the time it will acquire the terminal velocity in that case i would say the total force that is actually acting in downward direction that is f must be counterbalanced by the viscous force and that would be taken as 6 pi n r v got it now it's been said that we need to find the acceleration when the velocity becomes two-third of the terminal velocity that means at that time the resistive force would be 6 pi n r velocity was how much it is two-third of terminal velocity v into 2 by 3 that means the resistive force would be f resistive this portion is how much it is f it is 2 capital f by 3 this is the resistive force so now what is the total effective force acting in downward direction it is f in downward direction f this part in upward direction 2 f by 3 divide by m naught this is the acceleration and on calculation it will come out to be this is f divided by 3 m naught we have already found the value of f divided by m naught to be a so the acceleration at the instant when the particle will acquire two third of its terminal velocity is a divided by 3 so we are getting option 1 as the correct answer for question number 17 now let's proceed to question number 18 in question number 18 the shape of meniscus for a liquid of zero angle of contact 
this is just simply a theoretical question if the contact angle is zero then the meniscus will form a spherical shape there so option one is the correct answer straight away we are marking option one is the correct answer now let's proceed to question number 19 question number 19 here to what height h should a cubical vessel of side a should be filled with the liquid so that the total force on the vertical face of the vessel is one third of the force on the bottom neglect the atmospheric pressure this is the situation we are having here. Let this height being h fine so how much do you think is the force the liquid would exert on the bottom this is f i'm writing it down as uh, a square area into h volume into how much it's rho into g this is the total mass here into g now it's been said that up to what height it has to be filled so that the force on this segment would be one third of this one so at distance y here the force on this portion df dash i would say it is rho g into y this is the pressure into dy into a this is the force if i integrate this portion from y is equal to 0 to h i will have the force here as rho g a it is y square divided by 2 from 0 to h and i'm getting f dash here as rho g a h square divided by 2 what we said this force is actually one third of this one it is a square h rho g divided by 3 just try to find out here what is the answer for the value of h rho g will cancel out here on this side i am getting as uh, a h square by 2 equal to a square h by 3 one h will cancel out one a will cancel out and the value of h that is 2 a by 3 so for question number 19 i am having here option 3 as the correct answer now let's proceed to next question that is question number 20 in question number 20 a youtube is filled with water oil which does not mix with water is poured into one side until water rises by 25 centimeter on other side if the density of oil is 0 0.8 gram per cc the oil level will stand higher than water level by in fact we are taking the density of water to be that is very well known it is one gram per cc well this is the situation here this youtube was initially filled up to this much of the level and on this side if some oil is poured into then definitely this layer will shift slightly by this margin and this one will shift by same margin here so it's been said that other side actually shift by 25 centimeters so definitely this would be 25 centimeter itself so this is the level of water now this is 25 and this is 25 so effectively it is 50 centimeters so let's say this is the level of oil here so at this point the pressure from this side and this side must be counterbalancing the effect of each other so let rho naught is the density of water here so shall i say rho naught g into 50 centimeter in fact this distance is taken in centimeter itself must be equal to density of this part it is 0 0.8 rho naught into g into height h rho naught g will cancel out i have just explained the value of rho naught was the density of water itself so should i say h is actually 50 divided by 8 into 10 or 500 divided by 8 how much is this value it is actually 62.50 centimeter from this level okay and the water level from here is 50 centimeters so effectively the difference of these two height it is delta s that is coming out to be 12.50 
centimeter that is our required answer so for question number 20 option 2 is the correct answer now let's proceed to next question